for the best, lightest, fluffiest mashed potatoes? Well guys, you found the right video. I'm going to teach you how to make this beautiful mash and it is the best there is. Folks, this is Texas Cooking Today. On this episode, we're just going to do a quick video on how to pull off this simple recipe. I like doing these little quick videos from time to time just to throw out there. Nothing too involved. But folks, thank you very much for watching. Now let's get in the kitchen and get busy cooking up some delicious food. Come on. Today it is all about the potato. We're going to be making some wonderful mashed potatoes. Now if you're one of those folks that have made mashed potatoes and they always come out kind of dense and heavy and not really very desirable, well, guess what? Today I'm going to teach you how to take the real thing, how to cook it up the right way, and to make a very light, fluffy mashed potato. Very similar to what you would get in a top-end restaurant. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about the whipped potatoes that are kind of, oh, they're almost soupy <laughs> in, their, in their nature. That's not what I'm talking about here. That's a whole different way of doing it. What we're going to be doing today is what really, really fine restaurants do to produce a very light, fluffy, kind of airy almost uh, mashed potato. And I want to teach you to do it the right way. It's a very simple thing, guys. Another thing, if you would, if you're not into a skin on mash, which I'm going to make for me, but if you don't want yours to be skin on, go ahead and just peel your potatoes before we get started dicing them. If you're going to go skin on, make sure you scrub your potatoes really well. You don't want a dirty potato making your mash. Okay, so let's get busy cutting these up we're going to make the best tasting mashed potatoes that you'll ever eat. Come on. Now folks, we're getting ready to cut these potatoes up. But before I get into all of that and what we do to make a really good mash, it's about this guy. This is a big chunk of starch is what this is. It's a big old honking chunk of starch and what you have to do is soften the starch and then you have to break the chains apart and to break any of the, uh, if, if there's any fiber in the, a particular vegetable, you have to break that apart too when you're making a good mash. So what we're going to be doing here is turning this potato into something light and fluffy, something very airy. And to do that, that means that the starch can't be worked very much. It has to be worked very, very little. And even after the, it's broken from the solid form into a mashed form, it then can't be stirred or worked very much because you don't want it to become heavy after the fact. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a device to aid with that. Now there are two different devices that work for this. One of is this little item here. These are called a ricer. A ricer is a cool device. It's a sieve on the bottom and there's a cup above that sieve. You put your boiled item into the cup put the plunger in place and shove that boiled item right down through the sieve into whatever location you want it to be. Okay, that's a cool thing to use. However, I find that it's really limited mostly because it's such a small cup. You can only process a very small amount of potato at a time. A whole potato when cooked won't even really fit in there very well. So it kind of limits what you can process through it in a given period of time. But like I say, for a single serving, it's a great way to go and it's quick to clean. The other item that does this kind of potato processing well uses a sieve like this. It's a much larger sieve plate as you can see compared to that ricer. So an item like this will process a lot more potato. This is the same size sieve as this. Now I need to mention something. When you're processing your potatoes, sieve size matters. Here's the sieve that I'm going to be using today. The reason I want to use this instead of this is because when I'm processing my potato, I'm going to be doing it a skin on potato. If you're processing skin off, you can use this and get a much smoother mash. If you use this, it makes a nice country style mash skin on and it gives you some very, very tiny lumps 
in the mash itself. The lumps are so very small, it just lets you know that it was a homemade mash, but not lumpy enough that it seems uncomfortable to eat. In fact, it's very, very good mouthfeel when it's processed through this one. So that's what I'm going to use. The item that I'm using here, this is a real neat goodie. If you don't already have one, you need to pick this up. This is called a food mill. The sieve goes in the bottom and there is a rotary paddle that sets in here. There's this little guy. And once that's in place, it will push the potatoes through that sieve very fast. Okay, so a food mill like this is the best way I know of when you're making mashed potatoes for several people. And it is my favorite way of doing this mash. So that's the reason I'm showing you this method and I'm using the large. We're doing skin on in this one and we're gonna then dress it up with other goodies like butter, sour cream, salt, neat little things like that. We are doing our skin on mash. Now, something I need to mention, it's real important that we get an even cook between these two potatoes. So the way we slice our potatoes really, really does matter, guys. So we want our cubes that we make to be as identical to one another as, absolute, as absolutely possible. And while it's not possible to get every single piece identical, it is possible to get them awful close. Start back here. You do this to get even cooking, okay? Plain and simple. There we go. Now I have fairly even dice. And of course there's a small piece here or there those are gonna overcook, but don't worry guys, there's not enough of those small pieces to really matter in the whole scheme of this. Most of these pieces are around this size and they're all gonna cook up in a nice even way. It'll work wonderful. Let's go ahead and get these into our pot. I now have a high flame under my potatoes they are covered in water. So while they're heating, once they come up to a boil and they've cooked for a little while, when I take a fork and press it into one of these squares, if the square breaks in half and does not stick to my fork the way that's doing, when it breaks in half easily, then they're right where we need them, okay? Until then, they just need to cook. Now at this point, you can salt it if you want, but it's really not gonna make a lot of difference, okay? Because most of that salt will be in the water and then it'll just get poured off. The salting really works best if we do it right after we mill it. We're gonna put in some butter, salt, and some other goodies there. These potatoes have been boiling for several minutes and there's really no way I can tell you how long to boil your potatoes for. You simply have to just boil them because each pota uh, potato is going to be a little different from the next. Let me push my fork into this. Now you see how that potato just kind of broke apart as I push my fork into it? That's a very good thing. So these are really close to being finished. At this point I'm going to give them about another three minutes and then I'm going to pour them off. Now guys here's a trick for you. When you're going to pour these off you don't need a colander. All you need is the food mill that you're going to be milling it in. Put this in the sink, pour the potatoes into this, then put this right up on top of the pan and you're ready to start milling. It'll drain it for you. As I mentioned, simply pour it right into there. And then they're ready to go right back onto the pan. It's just that simple, guys. Now we can mill them. Now milling these is easy enough. All we have to do is crank the paddle. With the larger sieve, it'll pull these things down really, really quick. You're going to need a spatula to break loose what's up in the sides. Uh, sometimes these will hang up on the side a little bit. So have a spatula ready. Go. 
As you can see, we've only done this for a couple of seconds and more than half of the potatoes are now milled. So isn't that simple? Once we have our mash ready to go, we then want to add in our extras. I, of course, like some butter and plenty of it. I'm going to put in about a teaspoon and a half of salt, okay? And also, I have some sour cream here. And this is about a quarter of a cup total on my sour cream. And the thing of it is now, I don't want to whip or work this hard, okay? I want to work it lightly. So I'm going to set my butter in there, spread things around just a little bit. Now one other thing you can add, and this is a little trick when it comes to potatoes, if you want to amplify that flavor, you can put a little MSG in there, guys. MSG is not bad for you. Your body actually manufactures it, and it makes food absolutely stellar good. So a very tiny amount, just like that, okay? We just work that into it, and that is going to make it taste so potato-y. I've given that butter about a minute and a half to soften. Now I'm just going to gently work these potatoes. Do not overwork these guys. Just gently fold your ingredients in, and that way they will keep that light, fluffy condition that you tried so hard to create. We've got our mashed potatoes all prepared, and now we're ready to turn them into part of a stellar dish. I like to start with a nice bit of mash right in the middle of the plate here. And what I'm gonna do is open that up a little bit. Now folks, what I'm doing here, this is, this is if you're into gravy, then you should really appreciate that move right there. Mashed potatoes, they're so good with brown gravy. Who doesn't like a little brown gravy on the mashed potatoes? There we go, right there. Just a little bit to dress it. What it's going to get. Looky there. Isn't that gorgeous? That. That is the way I like my mashed potatoes, folks. There it is, guys. That wasn't that difficult, was it? And you end up with this most magnificent, fluffy, light, delicious mashed potatoes. It's like they just float in your mouth. And the beautiful flavors from the way we've dressed it. Folks, this right here, this is the way you need to be doing your mash. Thank you very much for watching. If you would, please take a look at my channel. A lot of good stuff there. Please share this video. Also, if you would, click like, subscribe. And folks, so you know, I release every Thursday, okay? So watch for my videos. They're going to be there on a regular basis. There's a lot of good stuff coming. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Well, there it was, folks. A wonderful recipe, easy to pull off, and a lot of fun to do. Hey, if you would, take a look at my channel. Most of what I do is a cross between regular cooking videos like everybody else on the internet does and actual full-on cooking tutorials, something that's kind of rare for free. Most people charge you for that kind of thing. But on this channel, that doesn't happen. So folks, please take a look at my channel, look at those tutorials, and you're gonna find some really cool information. Thank you very much for watching, and you have a good day. Bye-bye.